Here we have another liver. It's a nice liver. You can see that instantly. You can also see that it has a completely nodular architecture, even though not all of these nodules are in focus yet. Well, now they are. So you instantly know, besides this being liver, that it's cirrhosis. Because even if you can't see the cells, when you, or even if you don't look at it microscopically, when you see nodules and they're separated by fibrous tissue, you know that's cirrhosis. If they're big nodules that could actually feel uh, blindfolded, it's macronodular. If they're only about a millimeter and you have a hard time, then that's micronodular. This is a macronodular cirrhosis. And the one thing that you'll notice on this case is that between the nodules, especially in the portal areas, there appear to be a very inordinate or an extreme amount of inflammatory cells. So if you had the impression that maybe the cirrhosis was preceded by hepatitis, or perhaps the hepatitis was so long standing that it developed into cirrhosis, some people might call this a post hepatitic cirrhosis, then you're right. This uh, cirrhosis, and remember, cirrhosis is cirrhosis is cirrhosis, period. But if you would like to play a little detective because of all of the inflammation in these portal areas and theorize that uh, this was on the basis of a chronic hepatitis, you would be correct. Um, this is not a good case of chronic active hepatitis because it's already gone into cirrhosis. But as you know, most hepatitis will resolve some hepatitis persists. Some hepatitis persists over many years in an aggressive fashion. And these are the ones that are high risk for developing cirrhosis. And uh, this is a classical high power diagnostic view for a cirrhosis in which there is a tremendous amount of residual uh, hepatitis or an inflammation in the portal areas, which has given rise to this. Thank you very much.